Hello everybody and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And frankly, it's been a long time since I've done a video from in the car. So this is a little bit unusual, but I can tell you this, I promise it's gonna be worth it. This is gonna be fantastic. You're gonna love this, okay? If you like home kit stuff, or if you wanna be convinced to go to home kit stuff, or you wanna show it to somebody else, this is the thing for you right here, okay? I'm gonna show you something that is so cool. It's almost magical, okay? It's really, it'll blow your mind. That's what's gonna happen, okay? So what's going on is I'm out about running errands and I'm done now and we're heading home. And as we get close to the house, I'm gonna show you this amazing, magical thing. And I don't wanna spoil the surprise, so I don't wanna get into too deep, okay? But let me just tell you this. There's no chicanery here, okay? I'm not using camera tricks or doing something sneaky behind your back here. This is totally legit, all right? And as we get towards the house, you're gonna notice or, well, you won't be able to see it because you're gonna to have to be looking out the windshield. But I am not going to use my hands for anything except steering the car. I'm not gonna to touch anything except steering the car here. And I'm not going to use my voice to invoke any digital assistant, okay? And so when we get towards the house, you're gonna look at the house and watch and see this magic, okay? It's gonna be fantastic. So after I show it to you, then I'll show you how to do it. I'll tell you the pros and cons to it. And then you can set this up in your own home. So I'm gonna go, we'll be home here in a second and I'll switch you around and we'll see the magic happen. Okay, so we're almost home and I come back just a hair early because I wanna explain to you where to be looking so that you can see everything that's happening, okay? So, a little past this light that we're coming to, I'm gonna turn left and then an immediate right, and my house will be the second house on the right. So, as we make that second turn, you're gonna be looking out the right side of the window, and you can kind of see that the camera is kind of pointed that way already. On the second house on the right, it's got a flagpole in front of it, and there's a blue charger parked in front of it, and you're gonna be looking at the front of that house as we get up there. And I'm gonna narrate what's going on as we pull up, but that's all, okay? I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm just gonna be driving and just show you this and see what you think, okay? So here we come. Here's the first turn. Okay, so we're gonna make this turn here. And then we're gonna take this first right. I want you to be looking to the right. Okay, look to the right, look to the right. It's the second house on the right here. Okay, look there. Okay, can you see this house? Can you see what's going on? See it, see the garage we're going up? I didn't do anything. I just showed up at home and it's going up. I didn't say anything, I didn't do anything. Nobody's helping me. Now look at the ceiling. Look at the ceiling. Can you see it? You see the lights are on? Okay, so all I did was just drive home, the door went up and the lights went on. How cool is that? Seriously, holy cow. I mean, is that not magical? So, okay, it did, okay, so he, I, I'm so excited about this. So I get home, the garage door goes up, it turns on the garage lights, and the security cameras in my house go from recording to streaming, okay? All without me doing anything. All without me doing anything. Now, I'm gonna tell you right here, and I'll, I'll emphasize this later on, to make that magic happen, you're gonna have to bypass a little bit of the built-in 
um, security that Apple puts into HomeKit to get that to all happen, okay? And I'll tell you what exactly that means as we're doing it, but I'm gonna take you inside the house now and I'm gonna show you how to make all of that go. It's gonna be cool, okay? So let's go in the house. So before showing you how to set this all up, let me give you an overview of what's happening. When you and your iPhone leave your home, HomeKit sets what's called a geofence around your home, knowing that you left. With your house surrounded by this invisible HomeKit wall, you go about your business. When you're done, you head home, and when close enough, you break the barrier and start a chain of actions. HomeKit senses your arrival and says to itself, my owner is home, and it will trigger the first automation we create. In this case, turning on what I call Paul's trigger. When Paul's trigger turns on, it will in turn start the next automation, which opens the big garage door, and that will in turn trigger the final automation and turn on the garage lights. All with no effort on your part. All you had to do was arrive home. Now that you have the basic idea, let's take a look at how I do it. First, you're going to need a HomeKit device to act as a trigger. You can use any HomeKit enabled device but I dedicated a HomeKit switch that only acts as a trigger. It doesn't do anything else. These switches are cheap and they work great. I plugged it into a remote outlet and just let it be. You can find a link for these in the description or at my Amazon store. We can finally head into HomeKit and set up our automations. Start by opening HomeKit, then click on the Automations tab. Once there, you will create the first of three automations, turning on Paul's trigger. Click the plus sign to start making a new automation and choose People Arrive. In that section, you can determine who arriving will trigger this action. In my case, this automation only functions when I arrive. Leave the location and time set to home and any. Next, you'll choose the device you plan to use as a trigger. In my case, it was the switch called Paul's Trigger. To finalize this first step, make sure your trigger is set to turn on and then set to turn back off after one minute. This way the trigger will be ready to go again the next time you leave the house. You now have created the first step of the chain. Now we'll start another automation, but this time choose an accessory is controlled. Now, we'll choose to trigger again and set it to turns on, leaving the time to any and people to off. Now we can choose the big garage door and the garage lights and then we will select next. Here we can finalize the automation by choosing open for the garage door and on for the garage lights. This will fast become your favorite part of HomeKit, no doubt in my mind. 
So now let's talk a bit about the pros and cons of this setup as they are very important for you to consider before deciding if this is for you. I'll start with the cons as they include a potential security issue you must consider. Con. A giant hairy con. You are bypassing a security feature built into HomeKit. For things like doors and locks, Apple specifically included a two-step feature to make sure there are no accidental activations that will disable a secure item, like a door. You normally must make at least two separate actions to run a secure automation. Something like triggering the automation with your voice could be step one, and then unlocking your phone could be step two. In my case, by using Paul's trigger, that is becoming step one, and then the follow-up automation to open the door is step two. Now, why is this a big deal? Let me use my home as an example. My house backs up to one of the main roads in our community. So when I leave, I can go one way or the other. If I go right, the geofence will kick in. And so now, if I come back down the street the other way, I actually pass close enough to my house to break the geofence and trigger the automation. If I'm not paying attention, this can leave my home with the garage doors up while I'm not there. Now, I'm fully aware of this, and I pay close attention to it. I could also have the garage doors go back down by themselves, say, after five minutes or so. But for me, I just pay attention to the settings. Now, depending on your home and location, you may not face an issue like this. Say you live at the end of a cul-de-sac. But it is imperative that you evaluate your personal situation and the potential impact on your home's security. As to the pros, it's far more than a one-trick pony, as this technique can be used to activate all sorts of things, and it's surprisingly convenient. How often do you get home and you can't find your garage remote? Well, it happens to me a lot as I don't clip my remote to the visor. I don't want the remote to crease my visor, so I put it in the center console and every so often I struggle to find it. Another pro is the cool factor. Well, let's be perfectly honest here. HomeKit is in no small measure about the cool factor. And nothing I have done in my home comes close to how cool this really is. At the end of the day, you have to make the choice to use this or not. But at least now you have the information you need to do it if you choose to. So there you have it, one of the coolest automations I have come across for HomeKit and one that I truly love. I hope you love this video and if you do, please give it a big thumbs up, click subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss one of my HomeKit videos. If you have any questions or comments, please, as always, leave them down below. I love to hear from you guys. You guys are the greatest. So. That's going to wrap things up for today. Remember, the best way to predict your future is to create it. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying be good.